All right, everybody, good afternoon. We're on to undrafted rookie free agent number two in this series. Two of four, and it's going to be another wide receiver. I wasn't crazy about what we did in UDFA at any of the other offensive positions. I didn't see a whole lot of potential. Maybe the tight ends, but as of right now, there's no way we're going to be able to carry an additional tight end. So that's not super exciting to me. And the tight ends that we got seemed to be very niche players. So I wasn't really into that. Offensive lineman, we picked up like one. And I don't see much with him that gets me excited. The quarterback we picked up, Holton Allers, like he played well in college, but that doesn't mean a heck of a lot to me. The two running backs seem like they're not big enough to be in the NFL, but I think we did good at receiver. Even the uh, Oregon State guy, uh, Lin Lindsley, Lindsay, um, he actually looks like he has an opportunity, but there were two in particular that stood out to me as I was going through the attributes and traits and abilities of these guys. The first was the guy we covered this morning, Matt Landers, but this is the other guy. And unlike Landers, this guy has clear limitations, but he also has a unique skill set that he's bringing to the table here. And he does something that you don't see that often in the NFL, it feels like. It's not completely unheard of, but this guy's a little bit different. It's Jake Bobo of the UCLA Bruins. Uh, he had transferred around before this most recent season, but he had a nice breakout year under Chip Kelly last year. Um, the thing that stands out about Bobo is that he's pretty big. Six foot four, 91st percentile, 206 pounds, 61st percentile, uh, arm length slightly above average, 32 and a quarter inches, and 10 inch hands puts him pretty near the top of that as well for receivers. But on its own, that would be notable. However, the thing with Jake Bobo that really stands out is the fact that he's that big and he plays in the slot a lot. In fact, while he did play out wide more than he played in the slot last year, seems like a lot of the plays he made, seems like a lot of the catches he made were out of the slot. This is what is known in the NFL as a big slot. And Jake Bobo is probably going to find his ultimate NFL destiny if he has one, to be a big slot receiver. So that kind of makes him interesting in a way that you can't say about Landers. Like, Landers is awesome. I love Landers. But it's a little more typical with him. The reasons to like him are because he's big, he's fast, he's quick, he's a good athlete, blah, blah, blah. This guy, different. Because his skill set comes together in such a way that makes him work well in the slot. And unlike the average slot receiver say, Jackson Smith, who we just drafted, he's big. But anyway, let's talk about what Jake Bobo did last year for UCLA. He played all 13 games, 726 snaps, 84 targets, 57 catches, 817 yards for that Chip Kelly offense. So definitely more of a possession receiver than Landers, but not exactly a complete possession receiver either. You can see that he is busting a few big plays. Seven touchdowns, had one penalty called on him, four drops, QB rating when targeted of 117. He had 13 contested catches and caught almost 60% of the contested opportunities that he had. He had 450 reps at a wide receiver spot and then 250 in the slot. And then you also had 18 in the backfield. You can see that he had way more experience as a pass route runner than a run blocker as well, although he did get a decent amount of that in, 304 run block reps, and his grades were really good. On pass plays, his 82.9 was sterling, and his run block grade was above average as well from PFF. So you put it all together, you had a player who had a really nice season for a team that had a really nice season, and this is not a guy who played for, you know, San Jose Central or some school like that. No, this is UCLA. It's not Alabama, but it's not Tennessee Chattanooga either. So Jake Bobo, pretty clear what he brings to the table from all this, but let's uh, go over the details. He plays with a good deal of physicality, fighting through tight coverage. He's somebody who kind of lives up to the billing as a six foot four wide receiver, and he's somebody who is willing to scrap to beat tough coverage because that's an important skill when you're this slow because I'll say it straight up, Jake Bobo did not run his 40 time at the Combine for a reason. He did not want that on the record. 
Uh, he's really strong in contested catch situations because of his size, and he's also a good jumper. Um, so if you throw him jump balls and 50-50 balls, he's going to come away with a lot. He provides unique value as an oversized slot receiver that you rarely see. This is something different from the typical NFL player. So while he is limited in some areas, the fact that he offers something kind of unique is going to make him potentially more appealing to NFL teams and potentially more appealing to the Seahawks. He's a uh, good run blocker, uses his physical attributes well when mauling outside, probably a little bit better at it than uh, Landers was. So he's going to provide some plus play at that level as well, where that might actually give him a leg up in terms of trying to make the roster over a guy like Landers. He's got good hands, largely reliable in that area, doesn't drop too many passes. They're not elite hands. Like I said, he's got the same number of drops last year as Landers, but it's good. He's a skilled route runner, surprisingly agile for his size and build, and he needs to be a good route runner because of his physical limitations, but when you put him in the slot, he's able to find ways to get uncovered, especially against zone coverage, and if this guy ends up making the team even as just a practice squatter, that's kind of the upside here. We're assembling a team of guys who <clears throat> can either be really, really good against man or really, really good against zone, meaning that we'll always have the opportunity to field players that are going to be able to exploit what the other team does. Guys like DK Metcalf and Kenny McIntosh are going to be really good against man, and then you have a guy like a JSN and somebody maybe like a Jake Bobo who's going to be really good against zone. So you can kind of see the way this team is being built out. It's appealing, it makes sense, and it gives this offensive coordinator and this quarterback every opportunity to succeed. Of course, he has to make the team first, which is an uphill battle. Um, he's a smart and cerebral player with a strong understanding of positioning, knows how to put himself between the ball and the defender in those ke uh, contested catch situations to make sure he's got the first crack at it. And he played on the outside plenty at UCLA. So you know that if he needs to do it, he probably can. I don't know how well some of this stuff is going to translate to the NFL, but he gave you 450 reps playing as a wide receiver last year outside. So you got to at least give him an opportunity. He proved himself capable of fighting through press coverage at the college level, at least. Now, there are definite cons here. He's not going to break off a lot of big plays at the NFL level because he just can't run. There was a rumor right after the draft that he ran a 5-second 40. Now, I don't think that's true, and if it is true, it's not reflective of his actual ability on a football field, but he probably does run like a 4-6, if I had to guess. So, speed is going to be a problem with him. He is slower than JSN, and JSN is already kind of pushing it. But um, unlike JSN, who is a phenomenal route runner and has amazing change of direction, this guy is good in those areas, but he's not elite like JSN is, so he has more to make up for. He's still not agile compared to the vast majority of NFL receivers. He's agile for his size and build, but overall not really. And it's good that he's good in contested catch situations because he doesn't get open very much. He gets open against zone defense because he's smart and he knows how to find the hole in the zone, but he's not going to get open a lot against man coverage. And when he does, he's not going to get open by a lot because he just can't separate. And once he makes the catch, he's not going to do a ton of stuff after the catch. He's going to run for yards, of course, like anybody can. He's not going to break tackles. He's not going to make a lot of people miss. It's just going to be, I get what I can get. All right, so that is a look at Jake Bobo, who I think has something of a chance of making this roster. And if he leaks through, would be great on the practice squad. See you guys tomorrow, maybe on Twitch later today. Go Hawks.